Hey everybody, welcome to Nurse 155, Basic Medical Terminology. Uh, today is Chapter 6, the Cardiovascular System. So we're going to look at terminology referring to um, the structure and the function of the cardiovascular system, uh, some terminology related to the physical examination of the cardiovascular system, and then terminology related to different diseases, um, diagnoses, um, different testing, uh, imaging, blood work, um, that type of uh, type of terminology. So let's get right into it with the structure and function. Cardium or cardi, C-A-R-D-I, is a Latin word meaning heart. So anytime you see cardi as a uh, root to any word, we're talking about the heart, okay? Uh, myocardium, my means muscle, M-Y. So if you combine M-Y with cardi, myocardium with the combining vowel o we get heart muscle okay uh, the pericardium peri p-e-r-i is uh, means surrounding the pericardium is a uh, a fairly thin sac that surrounds the uh, heart muscle and protects it there's three heart wall layers uh, the epicardium epi epi being the outermost layer the um myocardium the heart muscle itself and then the endocardium endo being inner um, that's the innermost or within that's the innermost layer of the heart so epicardium myocardium endocardium uh, heart chambers there's two upper chambers the atria and two lower chambers the ventricles um, two uh, on the right side and two on the left side right atria right uh, ventricle left atria left ventricle Blood flow through the heart, um, we can look on the next diagram, you'll be able to see that. Blood is carried to the right atrium, and atrium is on top, and the ventricles are on the bottom. So uh, right vent, uh, atria, left atria, right ventricle, left ventricle. Um, so blood is carried um, through the inferior vena cava, which is lower, inferior, vena cava to the superior vena cava and dumped into the right atrium then into the right ventricle and then that blood is is pushed out and ejected uh, uh, into the pulmonary artery and into the lungs and then blood comes back to the heart to the left atria the left ventricle uh, and then uh, the left ventricle contracts and pumps blood to the rest of the body okay so you guys can take a look at the diagrams to see that okay um, heart contractions, I like this one, the cardiac cycle regulated by a conduction system. Uh, pay particular attention to the sinoatrial node. The SA node is typically called the uh, natural pacemaker of the heart. It's what sets the rhythm of the heart. Um, and then the autonomic nervous system affects both the rate and rhythm. The parasympathetic system slows heart rate reduces impulse conduction and dilates or makes bigger the coronary arteries and then the sympathetic system increases heart rate and impulse conduction cardiac cycle uh, basically it is delineated or marked as the beginning of one heartbeat to the beginning of the next that's a full cardiac cycle systole and diastole you oftentimes hear this when we're referring to blood pressure so when we think of blood pressure, you know, 120 over 80, we hear that one all the time. That's that 120, that's systole or systolic pressure, okay? And that's when the, the ventricles contract, okay? And then diastole is the bottom number. So 80, 120 over 80, 80 would be diastole or diastolic, and that would be the relaxation phase, okay? So S over D, systolic over diastolic. Cardiac output is the amount of blood pumped out by the heart within one minute. And then the peripheral uh, vascular system um, really is uh, uh, the network of arteries, veins, venules, capillaries um, that carry blood to the uh, other parts of our body. So our arteries, arteries away, carry blood away from the heart. I always, that's how I always remember it. Arteries away, arteries A, away, A, arteries away. Ventricles bring blood back to the heart, uh, or sorry, veins. 
bring blood back to the heart. So arteries away, veins too, okay? Um, capillaries are very small or minute vessels. Those are the ones we use when we do things like finger sticks for glucose. Um, on infants, we use the heel for capillary punctures. Okay, physical exam terms, uh, pulse, right? Uh, pulse, when we uh, assess a pulse, and in particular on an adult, we use the, the radial artery, fairly common, which is on the thumb side, just above the wrist. Um, a pulse would be uh, one heartbeat, one full cardiac cycle, and we measure that for a full minute. So it's beats per minute or BPMs. Uh, we do blood pressure um, as part of that. We use a sphygmomanometer for assessing blood pressure, which is the inflatable bladder and the tubing. And uh, if we're doing a manual blood pressure, uh, aneroid dial, um, all of that together is it's known as a sphygmomanometer. And then the uh, stethoscope, of course, to listen to blood pressure. Uh, and the Karatkov sounds are the different types of sounds that we could hear when we're assessing the blood pressure. One of the things I like to, to caution people with, too, is oftentimes you'll hear somebody say, oh, when we use a stethoscope and we're doing blood pressure, we're listening to a heartbeat. No, 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 no. You're not listening to a heartbeat. What you're actually listening to is the blood hitting the artery wall uh, of the brachial artery when we're assessing blood pressure here in the up, up above the antecubital space. And so we're listening to that pressure, that smack of the blood hitting that artery wall. That's what we're listening for. We're not listening to a heartbeat. We palpate a heart rate with the radial pulse, and there's other pulse points on the body, um, eight that we can palpate and one that we can auscultate, um, which is an apical pulse right above the heart with our stethoscope. Um, but when we're listening here, when we're using a sphygmomanometer, we're listening and hearing the uh, blood hitting the artery wall. Okay. Uh, abnormalities uh, upon physical exam, murmurs. Uh, murmurs can be either malignant, um, sorry, malignant or benign. Um, oftentimes murmurs are benign, but it takes uh, further examination by providers to determine whether a murmur is dangerous to the patient or not. Uh, Bruies are abnormal sounds heard over the blood vessels. Cyanosis, cyan is blue. Um, osis is condition of. So cyanosis is a blue condition or bluish condition, blue-like condition. Pallor means pale, loss of color possibly. Diaphoresis is profuse or uh, abnormal sweating. And then angina or angina pectoris is uh, chest pain in the cardiac region. Okay, different tests that we do for assessing cardiovascular system. We do a lot of serum blood tests. We do cardi uh, cardiac enzyme testing, um, partial thromboplastin times, um, prothrombin times. Those are, are for blood clotting factors or clotting disorders. Um, troponins. Um, and I like where it says uh, cardiac troponin measures the level of cardiac protein, known as troponin, and that's the best way to diagnose a possible MI or myocardial infarction, which is commonly called a heart attack. Okay? We do uh, cardiac uh, catheterization where we uh, uh, thread uh, a catheter through a vein and, and maybe inject uh, contrast dye so that we can look at veins and arteries um, with a, uh, a closer uh, view or a, a better picture of um, assessing flow through uh, through the arteries. Um, thallium stress treadmill tests are uh, radioactive contrast injected into the the patient, and then a just a treadmill stress test um, where we typically hook up, um, and that's non-invasive. The treadmill stress test we hook up a machine very similar to an EKG. And we have a patient walk on the treadmill and eventually get up to a, a slow jog um, and, and assess the heart's function under that type of stress. Okay, So invasive tests, so there's, you know, like anything, there's two different types of tests. Invasive, where we have to go inside the body, um, and then non-invasive, which is typically outside the body, um, doesn't, doesn't, um, typically there's, there's no pain to the patient whatsoever when we're doing non-invasive things like ECGs. Okay. Different disorders 
Arrhythmia, A meaning absence of. So an arrhythmia is absence of a normal rhythm, okay? They can be dangerous, they may not be dangerous. Again, it's a provider that has to make a further assessment on this. So some of the common cardiac arrhythmias, uh, atrial flutter, kind of says the atrial rate, to 250 to 400 beats per minute, that's pretty elevated. Um, bradycardia or bradycardia and tachycardia, uh, I say Brady versus Brady. So bradycardia uh, means that uh, the heart rate is lower than 60 beats per minute. In adults, the normal beats per minute uh, for heart rate is 60 to 100, anywhere from 60 to 100, with 72 being about average. Okay, so bradycardia would mean that, that the adult uh, heart rate is less than 60 beats per minute. And then the opposite of that is tachycardia. Tachy is increased. And that would mean that the heart rate is more than 100 beats per minute, and that would be a tachycardic condition. Okay, and then other terms that you have like premature ventricular contractions, um, ventricular tachycardia. Okay, uh, cardiac complications of having some of these abnormalities, possibly uh, aortic aneurysms, cardiac arrest, hypotension, uh, pulmonary edema or swelling. Congenital heart defects, which are present congenital, meaning present at birth or born with, could be atrial septal defects, um, uh, ventricular septal defects, okay? Um, other disorders, degenerative heart disease, degenerative meaning over time, progressive uh, deterioration of the, of uh, in this case, heart structure or function. Uh, coronary artery disease, CAD, very common, okay, narrowing of the arteries, um, which would be arterial stenosis, stenosis is narrowing, okay, uh, heart failure, hypertension, abnormally high blood pressure, which de can develop over time, um, myocardial infarction, which is commonly called a heart attack, okay, uh, inflammatory heart disease, inflammation caused by injury or tissue deterioration, things like endocarditis okay so if we go back to um, the epicardium myocardium endocardium endocarditis infection of the heart valves or the endocardium which is that innermost heart wall layer myocarditis inflammation of the heart muscle itself pericarditis inflammation of that pericardium that thin sac that surrounds the heart so those are inflammatory diseases Vascular disorders, um, other you know problems, thrombophlebitis, um, where a clot forms in a vein, an aneurysm, okay, weakening of the wall of an artery, okay, um, can be very serious because that can rupture, okay. Uh, so there's stenosis, the narrowing, right? Different types of stenosis, aortic stenosis, mitral stenosis tricuspid stenosis, narrowing, typically degenerative, right? Over time, progressive, okay? Um, different uh, cardiac insufficiencies where blood just doesn't flow properly, okay? Mitral valve insufficiency, that's a good one. Blood leaks back into the left atrium from the left ventricle during the systolic phase. So it's like blood backing up. So remember, it's got to go from the left atria to the left ventricle, and if blood is going the opposite direction, this is uh, mitral valve insufficiency. That mitral valve is not working efficiently. Different treatments. Uh, oftentimes, we use a lot of different drug therapies for the cardiac system. Um, you know, angiotensins are very common. They treat hypertension and heart failure. Um, they can help to to uh, reduce. Uh, the possibility of having uh, future uh, heart attacks, uh, antiarrhythmics, those uh, prevent uh, or treat arrhythmias, those abnormal uh, heart rhythms, uh, calcium channel blockers, lower blood pressure, reduce the heart's workload um, so that's not as stressed out. Okay, surgical treatments, um, different surgical options, invasive options, ablations, um, Cardiac conduction surgery, coronary artery bypass. Um, just on a personal note, had a family member that just had a quadruple bypass. So um, four arteries that were clogged um, had to be bypassed and, and kind of rerouted. 
and heart transplantation and, and worst case scenarios, right? Replaces a diseased heart with a healthy heart, okay? Uh, other treatments, uh, you know, things like cardiopulmonary resuscitation, CPR, when we do that, uh, basic life support procedure, uh, which can be performed on patients in cardiac arrest. So if, if their heart stops beating and they're not breathing, we jump into action and perform CPR. Uh, defibrillation or electric shock, um, that's used to, to treat or, or to terminate potentially lethal arrhythmias, uh, a, a heart rhythm that could kill you, okay? Um, there's implantable uh, defibrillators, pacemakers, which are used to uh, regulate cardiac rhythm. So if we had some damage to the SA node, that, that natural pacemaker, then we might have to implant a pacemaker, okay? Um, stents, mechanical devices, we've heard of, of, you've probably heard of patients that have had stents placed, mechanical devices inserted into an artery um, to kind of open the artery. So if there's narrowing, that's stenosis. If there's plaque buildup in the artery, um, stents can be placed to open those up. Now, I am not a doctor and I don't uh, uh, espouse to be one. However, working with physicians and, uh, and listening to uh, physicians, uh, typically they'll tell you that stents, you know, they don't prevent heart attacks. Um, and oftentimes stents must be, re must be placed again. So once you have a stent, there's probably a high likelihood that you'll probably have to have a stent again. Uh, because arteries will, again, once again, they will close. So this doesn't necessarily prevent that. Um, it typically prevents symptoms, um, you know, angina, that type of stuff. Um, but it's not necessarily something that doctors will say, oh, we will prevent a heart attack by placing stents. Now, they're typically, I would say, temporary measures to relieve symptoms or cardiac symptoms, or chest pain, that type of thing. Okay. Heart valve replacement surgery, um, very common surgical procedure to replace faulty valves. Okay. And that should do it for today. So I look forward to seeing you next week for another chapter, chapter seven. So I'll see you all then.